We just received an ASUS ROG G16 equipped with Ultra 9 processor and an RTX 4090 graphics card. The customer reported that the laptop doesn't power on, so let's take this baby apart and see what's going on. Right off the bat, the laptop looks flawless externally, no visible signs of damage or abuse. Let's start with removing the bottom case. Be extremely careful with the screw placement, the four screws at the front are smaller while the ones at the back are larger. I've in many cases where long screws is forced into the short holes causing a nasty bump on the palm rest. Trust me, you don't want that. Also, don't miss the two hidden screws under the rubber cover near the LCD hinges. If you skip them and try to force the cover off, you risk cracking or breaking it. Once the bottom cover was off, I immediately suspected liquid damage. There were visible signs of residue. The moment I peeled off the protective plastic to disconnect the battery, it became obvious significant corrosion on the motherboard. Unfortunately, that confirms that the motherboard is toast that as a nail. There is a good chance the battery and possibly the keyboard are affected as well. The keyboard ribbon cable wasn't directly in the spill zone so we'll need to test it further to be sure. When removing the battery, don't forget to slide out the locking clip before unplugging the connector. If you don't, you risk ripping the connector right off the board. The Wi-Fi card was also damaged by the spill so it won't be reusable. The SSD came out easily, just a single screw holds it in. Next, I removed the massive cooling system, heatsink and fans. The process was straightforward but extra gentle with the fan power cables. They are delicate so use tweezers or fine tip pliers to avoid pulling on the wires and damaging the connector. After disconnecting all ribbon cables, I detached the motherboard from the bottom case. Once out, the corrosion was even more extensive confirming it's beyond repair. Restoring this board would take serious time and resources, probably not worth it given the cost. There were also some corrosion signs on the palm rest, but visually the keyboard ribbon looks okay. We'll test it to confirm functionality. To detach the palm rest from the LCD assembly, I removed the screws near the LCD hinges. Don't forget, there are plastic hinge covers that need to be removed to access the two video cables. Those cables are secured with the locking clips and removing them was a bit tricky. Definitely use the right tools here to avoid any damage. That's all for today, folks. Love and peace to everyone.